Bonjour à tous. Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. Welcome to Wahiba Sand. Yes, another desert of Oman. In fact, our this year's trip to Oman is all about desert landscape. But make no mistake, Wahiba Sand, which is also known as Sarkia Sand, is very different than empty Qatar. I guess you have realized that from the trailer. Empty Qatar was all about massive sand dunes and sea of sands. Whereas this Wahiba Sands doesn't have such kind of towering dunes. But here we have more variety of landscape. And as there are villages around, we will probably also have opportunity to take the desert images with the camel and also probably ride them. But before that, as usually, let's see where this Wahiba Sand is and how we came here. The Sharkia Sands, formerly known as Wahiba Sands, as it is home of the Bani Wahiba tribe. The area is around 12,500 square kilometers. From the empty Qatar, we drove all the way to the city of Nizwa, which is a very long drive, more than 600 kilometers. We have spent two nights preparing in Nizwa and of course visited the famous Nizwa shock and some shopping. And from there, we came to Al Mintarib to start our adventure of Wahiba Sands. So, we have already reached our first campsite. It's a bit different than the empty Qatar. It's a proper, authentic Bedouin camp that you see in the movies. Large, authentic and comfortable. Come, let me show you. See, the proper Bedouin tent. Oh my God, it's like a bedroom, isn't it? And neat and clean, everything is so perfect and so comfortable for three of us to sleep here. Now, let me introduce you to three special champs of the desert. Come, come. Voila, here are the three champs I was talking about. <laughs> Meet them. They are so cool. They will be with us for coming four days. Oh. Now let me introduce you to the most important members of the crew. Abdullah you already know, right? Because you met him in empty Qatar. We also have another Abdullah. Abdullah, say hi to the camera. Hi. And we also have Ahmed. Hi, the camera. And we also have Abdullah's father. So... <laughs> so, basically, we already know uh, Abdullah and Ahmed because in our last trip we were together as well. I'm pretty sure you have seen our beautiful picture near the fire with the camel. It was Ahmed and one of them with the fire little bit lead, that was Abdullah. So, I'm sure we will have a great fun. Thank you guys for all the arrangements. Thank you for coming, thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay, enough talking. Now time for some visual treat. Oh. This is another of my favorite activities at the desert in the evening, the campfire. It feels so good. It gets a little bit cold with the warmth of the fire. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so after the whole day of climbing the dune, walking around, we are super hungry and we have the food. Abdullah, have to remind me the name. What is this it is, called? Uh, it's called Kabuli Digag. Kabuli digai. Basically, they cook the chicken, 
um, with spices and water until the chicken is cooked. Then they remove the pieces and add uh, the rice. So, so basically mm -hmm. the rice cooked in the broth of the chicken. So gets the flavor exactly. of the spices exactly. and the chicken. Okay. And this we do it with chicken, with meat and also with the fish. Wow. Okay, nice. very nice. That's almost like pulao. Huh? We okay. make that chicken pulao or something, it's yeah. the same yeah. way. Okay. It's nice. So, okay, bon appetit and uh, good night and we'll let you enjoy the night sky and see you tomorrow. Bismillah. 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 Good morning. The sky is getting brighter. Five at the clock. I can't wait to go out there and capture some sunrise. Abdullah has already got the camels. They're heading towards the location. So it will be exciting to put all the elements together. The fire, the, the camel, the sun, the sand. Bianca and Ricky are still sleeping. I don't know if they will go there or not. But you know what? I can't wait for them because the sun will not wait for us. So let's chop chop. Abdullah is taking the camels to the perfect location for the best composition. So we have the camels, the fire, the rising sun, all in one frame to photograph. And of course, the customary making of the tea in that fire. The preparation for making the fire is in progress. And so as the preparation for finding the perfect composition. The best light will only stay for a few minutes. And finally. This is an absolutely magical moment. You really need to experience it personally.
Ah, after all those running around with the big camera and finding the right composition for the camel, so that the sun is behind the, the kettle and everything, I'm very, very hungry. And look, what a delicious breakfast we have. Very local style. We have this locally made Omani bread, very pure honey that Abdullah explained a little bit before, absolutely coming out of the organic stuff. Dates, Dates yeah. hummus, musabbal, some mandarin. I will eat a lot. <laughs> so, bismillah. So, everything is wrapped up and we are ready to go to our next destination. We will venture towards sugar dune. They are the white sand dunes meet the ocean. Yes, sounds very interesting, right? But it's a long journey. So we will rush, rush, rush. Let's roll. Our tent is getting ready and so do we to witness the amazing beauty of sugar dunes meeting the Arabians. Trust me, it is mind blowing and very least visited region of Oman. Let me show you around. It is super windy and we are having a hard time setting up the camp. But with the expertise on board, nothing is impossible. Okay, so our adventure continues. Uh, the sunset was pretty good, but trying to capture the good sunset, I probably insisted to put the tent in the wrong place. And the wind has not gone down. It's still pretty windy. And there's a quite a lot of sand inside the tent. I got the picture. <laughs> it's so windy <laughs> that normally Abdullah cooks it outside, uh, cooks the food for the dinner outside under the fire. But it's so windy that we couldn't put the fire outside. So he has this little kind of uh, alternative, a little stove where he is cooking inside the tent. Honestly, I, I can't even think of cooking inside the tent without getting a fire. So I think it's a good skill. So yeah, let me show you how the, the food looks like. Looks delicious after a whole day of uh, running around. We're so hungry. Seems like we're going to have a good dinner. And hopefully after that, we will be able to sleep properly. So let's see. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Masha Allah. 
Okay. Finally, the food is here. You know, sometimes we don't realize how lucky we are that we have actually food at the end of the day to eat. And even in this type of very adverse weather, I must say that it is it is a treat to have some some warm food. It's not only it's like chicken, rice, vegetables, and stuff. Pretty good. Anyway, so bon appetit. The idea was to take some night sky today. I don't think that will happen with this wind and all this stuff. So good night, and hopefully see you tomorrow for the sunrise. Ah. Oh. Good morning. So the sky is getting colorful. The wind has gone down. Yesterday night was a real disaster. The wind was so strong, the sand was completely blowing. It was like a mini sandstorm, but now it's more like the little ocean breeze. I see both the Abdullahs are above the dune making the fire. There's a bit of haze on the horizon, so I don't know if we can really see that ring of fire like sun coming out of the ocean or not. Something that I personally like a lot. But you know what? We should get ready, set our work equipment, and wait for the right moment. So let's chop chop. This place is so different than Rabalkali. It doesn't have those towering dunes, but the texture of the dune is very interesting. With all those light and shadows, it's really fascinating. Thanks to Abdullah for bringing us to a very different place, something that is not visited that much by normal tourists. Another thing is that there is quite a lot, bit of life here. For example, today morning when I was going out, getting prepared, I saw a little fox passing by. Very interesting. Anyway, now should we get going? But before that, let me ask you one thing. Did you guys realize why this is called sugar dun? I guess so, right? Because the sand is all white. That is why the sand is like sugar, so sugar dun. Because this is the only place in Oman where you get this type of white sand. Everybody, uh, every, everywhere else is mostly yellow sand. So that's the main reason of this being sugar dune. Okay, so we're all packed up. We're leaving the sugar dune and going to our next destination, which is where Wahiba sand meets the sea. To be honest, I'm feeling a little bit sad. Our trip to Oman is coming to an end. So the fairy tale, the stroll through the Arabian nights is almost finishing. Normally, you know, making this type of videos take a lot of effort. I mean, I know people kind of look through, stroll through the videos and all this stuff, but I can tell you from the planning of the trip, from the sun position and the moon positions and the locations and the dresses and the colors and the equipments, everything takes a huge amount of planning and effort. It's like years of planning to get a trip like that and that's what you see as an end result it's okay i mean what is important to me is to enjoy the whole thing and capture this as a memory for the lifetime and that is what we like to do and that's where it motivate us to to keep going and make such films anyway stay tuned 
stay with us and we'll show you where the Wahiba sand meets the sea. Oops, you guys are here. So, we reached our next as well as last destination of our desert trip to Oman. Hopefully last is the best. Here also, the sand dunes meet the Arabian Sea. But the difference is that the color of the sand is yellow. Our tent is ready and I wish to wear my long red dress in the last day of desert. In the sand, it will look beautiful. You will see it. It was a lovely day and very different from all the other desert locations of Oman. Good night for now and see you tomorrow. At night, the wind picked up heavily. Not at all a comfortable situation in the sand. It is a pretty crazy situation. The wind has picked up really strong. And you can see the sand is almost coming inside the tent. Priyanka is sleeping. I don't know, it sounds like a 30, 40, 50 kilometer per hour wind in the sand. <laughs> it is not a joke. You see the tent is really moving very fast. And the sound of the sand is dramatic. It's very difficult to sleep, actually. So I thought I should probably record this as a memory. We are trying to sleep and you can see all these things that are flying around. It's coming with the light. It's not really fly. It's more flying sands inside. It's 
really dramatic. You can see there are sands coming into the tent. We somehow locked the tent very tightly, but still it's scary. And good thing is that it's a Bedouin tent, so it's way stronger than our normal fiber tents. Otherwise things would have probably flown away. Just listen to the sound of the wind. Honestly speaking, it is pretty scary in here. I hope the tent doesn't fall down, but it is really a very tough condition. Wow. Today, we woke up a bit early. Personally, I'm a bit sad as this is the last night of our main trip to Oman. A trip that was planned so long back is coming to an end. Let's see what we can do with the sun. So that's it, our journey through the magical sand of Oman has come to an end. It was absolutely stunning, mind blowing. We have enjoyed it thoroughly and tried to capture the natural moments that normally unseen by the common tourist. We hope that you have enjoyed them too. And if you did so, please give us a thumbs up. It really means a lot to us. And if you have not done it already. Please subscribe and press that bell icon to get notification of our upcoming videos. So, ciao for now. And see you around next time.